All right, this is the book of John, chapter 16, and verse 33. And it says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. Shalom to you brothers out there that are laboring, enduring the elements, making your body a living sacrifice, trying to seal the elect, making your calling election assured, seeking out your own salvation, as well as you sisters that are learning, listening, applying, being obedient to your husbands. Shalom, shalom. Again, it's the brother Zachariah coming back to you with another highways and hedges in the chief place of concourse as commanded. Okay, and Lord willing to be edifying unto you. All right. So uh, pretty much I'm going to go into... Um, you know, um, various topics and current events as I normally do on my highways and hedges. It's been like a, a new thing, you know, an uh, ongoing thing, all right, uh, as of late, all right, you know, kind of just rounding up all of my uh, articles and things that I come across, sometimes video clips, all right. Uh, in this case, and today, you know, it's a ton of articles. I don't know how long it's going to be, but uh, Lord willing, hey, we're going to get through it, all right, and Lord willing, this be edifying unto you because, you know, I treat it as a lesson as well, you know, when I come out on the highways. You know, I prepare my lessons. That's why it takes a lot of time. Uh, I was like, man, I got looking at the time. You know, it's uh, six. It's a little after six thirty. You know, and I'm like, this is. I'm usually wrapping up by now. You know, but here I am, uh, just now beginning. But it's okay. You know, hey, we're gonna be out here. We're gonna knock it out. All right. So I started off with John sixteen and verse thirty three, which I'll read it again. It says, "These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. So we'll have peace." And Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, we will have peace, okay? It says, in the world ye shall have tribulation, okay? We're going to have tribulation in this world. You know, the scripture says, through much tribulation shall you enter into the kingdom, all right? So we're going to go through uh, adversities and things in this kingdom, man. But, you know, uh, the Bible also says, he that endures to the end shall be saved, all right? Unlike what the Christian church has taught that, you know, people walk around saying, I'm saved. Meanwhile, some of them, they be the most wickedest people of, of our people, doing wicked stuff, gossiping, hating, um, uh, conning, getting over on, uh, adultery, all kinds of things, you know. But yet they say they're saved just because they go to church every Sunday. You know, come on, man. You know, we got to do better, but they're under a strong delusion, okay. It says, all right, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. So we got to be of good cheer, okay. I have overcome the world. Yahweh shall overcome this world, all right? You know, which, uh, you know, it also makes me uh, think of uh, this one scripture here. Uh, give me a second. We're going to go to the book of Philippians. Uh, let's see. The, the book of Philippians, chapter 4 and verse 13, all right? Yep, here we go. And it says, uh, I can do all things through Hamashiach Yahawashai, okay, which strengthens me, all right? So, you know, we can do all things, uh, you know, uh, through uh, Hamashiach Yahawashai, man, all right? So, you know, you know, if he overcomes this world, then we can, okay? So you have to keep that in mind, all right? So with that, we're going to go ahead and start jumping into these uh, current events, uh, you know, because I got a lot of them, and I'm gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna try to get through them. All right, so just bear with me. All right. And again, Lord willing, this be edifying unto you. All right. So the first article it says, "Why didn't Louisville's tornado siren sound during severe weather of, on Fourth of July?" And I'm bringing this out because you know this is uh, where I'm from. I'm from this area. All right. Uh, some will call it Kentuckiana because it's kind of like you know you got uh, Southern Indiana and you have Louisville. All right. You know, some parts of uh, Indiana, you could literally stand and look and see the city of Louisville. You know, but of course, in order to get over to, to the next state, you have to cross the bridge, all right? Because, you know, we have the Ohio River, all right? But, uh, you know, we was impacted by some severe weather this week, and, and we ended up getting a tornado, man, all right? On both ends, both sides, all right? But there was no sirens, so people were kind of like through for a loop. You know, they didn't say anything about a tornado warning or anything. Okay, so again, it says, why didn't Louisville's tornado siren sound during severe weather on 4th of July? It says, a tornado struck West Louisville on Thursday, but the city's 
tornado sirens didn't go off. Here's why. And you know, and it's crazy, it says West Louisville. All right, for y'all that are tuning in and you're not from this area, West Louisville is nothing but Jake, okay? So it, it makes you think like, okay, did they purposely not do it because they, want, they didn't want Jake to know? You know what I'm saying? Because we know that this devil is playing with the weather. But then also, you know, I said something earlier to the degree that the Heavenly Father could have done this, okay? Which he's doing all these things, even the things that they do, he's controlling everything. But he could do something that, and that they were like, you know, hey, this came out of nowhere. We didn't even know it was coming. You know what I'm saying? Because the Heavenly Father will flex his power to show them, you know, who's really running things, okay? Because this man is full of pride. And even if the Heavenly Father shows them, they're still going to keep that pride because they're puffed up, you know? But he, he uh, allowed them to get to that level because the fall, their fall is going to be very, it's going to be, man, sweet, man. It's going to be even sweeter, all right? So it says uh, here, uh, Jefferson County has more than 130 tornado sirens across the city. But when a tornado struck West Louisville on 4th of July, many residents were quick to notice that their, the sirens didn't go off. That's because they, that's because they didn't. See, it says this tornado that touched down yesterday came without any warning. Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg, okay, this guy, and I think he's an Amalekite too, man. The mayor in Louisville, all right, said on Friday, all right, you know, he, you can't trust that guy. Every time I see him on the TV, he don't even, man, he just, it's something about him. You know, he's an Amalekite. But it says it came without any warning, warning us in the city. He said it came without any warning to the state. It came without any warning to the National Weather Service, okay? So, I mean, but if that is true, then hey, the Heavenly Father, man, <laughs> hey, he's tough, man. Hey, he's, he's nothing to play with, all right? So I got a couple of uh, precepts I want to go through real quick, all right? Yeah, because this, this side over here, we were hit too, all right? And they said it was an EF, uh, EF1, all right? But hey, it didn't come nowhere near me, you know, uh, which I'm not being proud or boastful or nothing. Hey, you know, call all your how about Shimei was shot, man. You know, all praises, you know, because, you know, hey, he, he says he'll protect his elect, man, okay? This is Isaiah uh, 29, verse 6. It says, Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts. This is Yahweh, okay, with thunder and with earthquake and great noise, all right, with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. And keep that flame of devouring fire in mind, okay? We got an article going into fires, all right? So we'll get into that in a little bit, but I want to wrap this up, all right? We're also going to go to the book of uh, Second, uh, no, First Thessalonians, Salakia. Yeah. All right, let's see. Okay, this is First Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 1, but I think the point is in verse 2 and on, on down. But it says, But of the times and, and the seasons, brethren, all right, ye have no need that I write, uh, that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief of the night. So showing you that, hey, the Hamashiach Yahweh will come like a thief of the night. Hey, he can come out of nowhere, even right uh, to this day, man, with these uh, nat these storms, natural disasters. They could just pop up at it anywhere, all right? So that keeping that in mind, how that just came out of nowhere, that's how Yahweh Shah going to return, okay? That's why it, it made me think on, upon this, man, all right? But verse 3 says, for when they shall say peace and safety, okay? A lot of our people like to be, they, I just want to be safe, secure and everything, okay? All right? For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come up upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. All right? Verse 4 says, but ye brethren are not in darkness, all right? That that they should overtake you as a thief, okay? So it won't take you, all right? All right, which means, you know... <laughs> you know, take you out, man. All right. So you have that. And I got another article uh, on this same matter. I want to go into it real quick before we jump into the other one. All right. And this, is, and this one is just some more local news here. And it says, tornadoes cause damage shock in Parkland neighborhood. All right. And it was like EF1 tornado sweeps through Parkland neighborhood. All right. And then it says, hold on, the National Weather Service has confirmed tornadoes hit Louisville and Harrison County, Indiana, all right, during the round of storms Thursday. So, yeah, we were hit, man. Okay? We were hit with these storms. Okay? 
you know, uh, you got a uh, got a couple more precepts regarding this. All right, got to got to bring these out. All right, we got uh, we're gonna go to the book of Psalms, chapter eighty-three, and verse fifteen. Okay, and it says, uh, "So persecute them with thy tempest." Okay, that wind, man, powerful wind, the storm. Okay, and make them afraid with thy storm. Okay, and I was t talking about this regarding the hurricane over there uh, that hit the uh, islands, man. All right, and our people were out there uh, twerking and grinding and dancing out in, in the middle of a hurricane, man. Okay, that ain't the right spirit to be in. Okay, so they don't really, they don't consider judgment. They're not thinking about judgment. All right, but they're going to, man. They're going to. All right. Because like I said, man, uh, Yahweh is a, is a uh, you know, he's a God of mercy, man, but he's also a God of wrath. You got to keep that in mind, man. Okay? This is the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 3, and it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Okay? The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. You see that? Getting hit with these tornadoes and stuff, man. Hey, Yahweh Bashimi Shai is not to be played with, man. Okay? So you have that, all right? And I got this article here, all right? And it just says, Darling Three Fire Near Lapine, okay? Which that is uh, talking about Oregon, all right? By the way, all right? And it says, Grows to uh, 17,000 acres, prompting evacuations, okay? Which I, I looked at a current, this, this article was one that I didn't get a chance to get into, but uh, they had some fires here recently. And they had to do a lot of evacuations, man. But uh, I, I seen a recent article where it said that they have it contained now. But hey, they have it, but still, hey, it's burning stuff up, man. That's why I said what, it, what I was talking about earlier in uh, Isaiah 29, verse 6. It says, uh, the flame of devouring fire. Okay. Which also makes me think of uh, this scripture here in the book of uh, Luke. All right. Chapter 12 and verse 4. 49 all right and it says i come i am i am come to send fire on the earth and what will lie if it already be kindled okay shahawah shah man he's coming to burn fire on the earth and he says what will lie if it already be kindled so it's already going to be kindled you're going to be seeing uh you know fires such as that okay and then just a fire lit up in these heathen man to prepare for war which we're going to get into that a little later in this lesson all right this highways okay so you got that happening, all right? All right, so moving on. And like I said, I'm just going to uh, roll on through with these, man. There's a lot of uh, lot of articles, man, and then some, you know, scriptures and stuff to get into, all right? This is another one here regarding storms, all right? Man, it says, Hurricane Burrow slams to Mexico's coast as Caribbean death toll rises to 11, okay? So, you know, they was hit uh, here recently, man, all right? They were just hit. There's a lot of damage out there in um, the Caribbean islands, man. You know, they're saying a lot of uh, structures have been destroyed, uh, power power outages, they're out of, you know, and who knows how long it'll take. I lived in Puerto Rico, so I know all about these hurricanes and what it, you know, how it, it affects the people in the Caribbean islands, the West Indies, all right? You know, we were without power for three months, okay? You know, I went through that. So the Heavenly Father, uh, allowed me to be there and allowed me to experience that and go through that. So maybe, hey, if that comes and happens, it's I, my mind. I won't flip out like most people will. You know, you know. Uh, one time, uh, power. We had a uh, during a, a winter storm out here where I live. You know, uh, there was a winter storm that happened, and uh, it knocked some power out. And uh, some of the residents, they were out without maybe a day or two, maybe three days without power, and they was flipping out. You know. Food went bad and everything, man. One guy was like, I had just, and he was a Jake too, man. He said, I just bought groceries and his groceries went bad. You know, but I still have power. Just to show you, man, hey, the Heavenly Father, man, he'll take care of his elect, man. All right. And I was going to offer him, you know, because I think he's a fellow Gadite, you know, and I, I uh, 
you know, it don't matter if he was or not, you know, if he was an Israel, you know, he's an Israelite, you know, he's still, you know, but I think he is of the tribe of Gad, just looking at him, you know, it's a little different, all right, but uh, uh, he's an older, older guy, and I was going to offer uh, to for him to put his food in my fridge, but I didn't have no room, man, I, hey, I just got food, so I, I would have been in the same boat as him, but my fridge was full, and I had no room for his stuff. So he had to throw all this stuff out. He was he was he wasn't too happy about that. All right, but hey, you got to come back to your house, Bashimi Abishai, man. He'll take care of you. Okay. So yeah, you had this hurricane burrow that slammed into Mexico's coast. Okay, the tribe of Issachar. So the tribes are all was being affected by this storm. That's the heavenly Father, man's doings, man. Okay, it's the heavenly Father doing this, I'm trying to tell our people to wake up. And it says the death toll rises to eleven. All right, which speaking of 11, all right, we got another, uh, you know, this article here, and it's something about that number 11, I guess. It says 11 killed, 50 shot in Chicago during extended 4th of July weekend. So, you know, man, things is just evil and real evil out here, man. You know, this is why it's good to not be out and about just constantly, you know, oh, I'm out in these streets and stuff, man. You know, uh, the love of many is waxing cold, man. It's, it's waxing cold. It's getting bad, man. So, you know, you don't want to be out here with, with all that. And, you know, uh, that's uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 12th verse. All right. But uh, I got a couple of precepts going in this because one of, one of the things we got to keep in mind is that, uh, you know, we're not supposed to be partaking in these so-called holidays, too, you know. Because it, it not only, you know, it's not our custom, but it puts a certain spirit, you know, on uh, on our people. All right. This uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, starting at verse 2, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the, for the heathen are dismayed at them. All right. Verse 3 says, For the customs of the people are vain. And that's the key point there. It says, For one cut off a tree out of a forest, which this is going to what they do now, modern day is known as Christmas, okay? Showing you that the Heavenly Father is not dealing with that, okay? For one cut of a tree out of the forest, all right, the work of the hands of the workmen with the ax, okay? And that's what they do. They chop the trees down and decorate them and celebrate Christmas and say that it's uh, celebrating the birth of uh, Jesus, you know, which his name, that's not even his name, okay? But, you know, you know how they are, all right? But we're supposed to learn not the way of the heathen. We have our own uh, customs, and, and, and celebrating that is not one of them. So continue on, uh, partaking in it. You know, you're just uh, making the heavenly Father uh, more, more, and more, more uh, furious and angry with you, to where he's gonna uh, execute a, a heavy judgment on you. Okay, eleven dead and fifty shot. That's a lot. <laughs> That's heavy, man. All right. This is Ephesians chapter five. I'm going to start at verse 16, and it says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. You see that? Remember I said the love of many is waxing cold, okay? Wherefore, be not, uh, be ye not unwise, all right, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, okay? All right, and be not drunk with wine, all right, being drunk with this Babylonian wine, keeping the customs of the heathen, okay? But keeping your, your, your feast days, the holy days, and stuff like that, okay? And it says, all right, be not drunk with wine wherein in this excess, but be filled with the spirit. All right. So, you know, it's a heavy thing, all right? That the times that we're in, all right. I got this other uh, where's it at? Oh, here we go. Hey, and this one's kind of crazy, man. All right, it says more and more young people aren't in school, all right. It says working at jobs or even training. Okay, they don't want to do nothing. This new, this new generation, you know, I got, I got, you know, and I'm not trying to put any of my kinfolk on blast, but a lot, I got kinfolk that's like that. They don't want to work. They don't want to do, you know, some of them want to live off the government. You know, they just don't, they don't want to do anything, man. I understand, you know, yes, uh, even waking up in, uh, in this truth, you know, you got Jake in this truth that don't really want to go and work a nine to five and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do if you got a family. And even if not that, you know, to keep you from being on the streets, you know. Some are able to live with family. I can't do that. You know, I got to have my own. You know, I'm a 40-year-old man. I can't live with my peoples, man. 
And it's just, my peoples are very, very crazy too, man. I'm talking like bipolar, schizo, all that, man. They have, they, and they ain't in this truth too. It would not work. You know, I got to have my own, my own place. But, uh, you know, uh, with that, you got to pay bills. You got to keep bills, your, your rent and everything paid, you know, to keep from being on the streets. Okay. But I got careful, man. They don't even want to work. And I'm see this generation, like even with my job, I see people come and go. Some come in there and can't even work a day. You know, they can't even work one day, man. You know, and I'm like, man, that's crazy. They, they don't want to work at all. They just want stuff handed to them, you know. And it's just, it's crazy. That's why, uh, that's why Esau out here trying to merge man with machine. He trying to turn you into robots <laughs> so he can get you working. You know, these people don't want to work, man. He want to control you, all right? So again, it says more and more young people, all right, aren't in school. It says working at jobs or even training, all right? That's, so that's heavy, man, you know? They don't want to do anything. All right, I got to uh, see. All right, we're going to go to uh, the book of Philippians. All right, hold on. Uh, all right, the book of Philippians, chapter 2. And we're going to go, we're going to read verses 14 through 16. All right. And, uh, and it says, do all things without mummerings and disputings. All right. And it says, uh, date. Ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked, this is the key point, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, okay? And, uh, you know, this this nation, this people, man, they through, man. Two-thirds of our people are through, okay? It tells you that some women will give, uh, uh, they will bring forth monsters, you know? What's up, man? But it says that uh, perverse nation, it says among whom... Ye shine as lights in the world. It says, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Okay, so what we're doing, we're putting in this work. All right? You know, we're putting in this work and doing this work, all right? You know, uh, not only, you know, working at 9 to 5, of course, that has to do with the curses, and you just got to, hey, until this place crash, man, you know, we got to do what we got to do to keep a roof over our head. You know, you pay your bills, you know. Your phone, the phone bill, you know, so this can, we can do this, you know, this ain't, this ain't free. It don't just, voila, happen, you know, you know, getting a, this tripod, you know, hey, it costs money. These garments cost money, you know, money don't grow on trees, man. You know, you got to work, but, uh, you know, not only that, but we're doing the work of the Lord, man. This right here, this is work, okay? But like I said, these people don't want to do anything. So if they want to do that, I can imagine they don't even want to do this if they came into this, man. All right? Which, that's heavy consequences. You know, brothers, hey, brothers will get on you <laughs> about not doing that work, man. But, you know, hey, many are called, but few are chosen. Okay? So that's pretty much, a hey, type of times we're in. All right? So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. Like I said, there's a lot of articles. So just bear with me. Like I said, we're going to get through it. All right? And this one uh, says, North Carolina School District wants students to scan barcodes to ride buses. Okay, they're getting, it's getting crazy. And while we uh, are on this subject, you know, here locally, all right, there's a bus bus driver shortage. You know, there were kids when, they begin, when school was beginning, there were kids that were getting home uh, as late as 10 o'clock at night. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. You know, and now uh, one of the things they were proposing is that uh, some kids could ride uh uh public transportation like the tarp bus okay man there's so many uh sick old wackos uh homeless folk you know which ain't nothing against homeless but you know some of them uh man hey they pull out now they into a bunch of weird stuff man and you know you're gonna have some young kids uh, riding these tarp buses that ain't they ain't they ain't gonna go go right man it ain't gonna go good all right so you know you have that you know, uh, they starting to cut routes. Even with the TARP, you know, people use that use public transportation. Some people don't have cars, so they got to use public transportation to get to point A to point B. And they're starting to cut routes. That's another thing that they're doing around here. You know, they're starting to cut routes now. And some guys is like, man, that's going to hurt, you know, with them trying to get to work and do. 
And, you know, one dude was on the news. It was a Jake, too, man. He was crying. You know, he literally was, man, he had tears coming down his face, man, you know, over that. It, it, he's hurt, you know. But, hey, man, the Heavenly Father, man, he's pulling the plug on this place. And our people, hey, uh, what the scriptures say, Matthew 24, verse 8, says all these are what? The beginning of sorrows, you know. You know, our people ain't hearkening, man. So the Heavenly Father, man, he's, strip, he's stripping this place, man. All right, pulling that plug. So again, it says North Carolina School District wants students to scan barcodes to ride uh, buses. Hey, man, and that's gradualism, you know. That's got me thinking, hey, man, kind of like, hey, they're getting close to, to that mark, man. All right, y'all know what I'm talking about, that MOTB, man. That mark of the beast, all right. This is Matthew 24, verse 19. It says, and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, okay. It says, woe unto them that have children, man. You know, young, especially young children in the last days, all right? You know, and, and you know, I, I said, I feel for y'all to have young kids, man, especially those that are in school. You know, uh, for us, and it's truth, but most of the kids are being homeschooled, okay? And if they have to go to public, you know, the parents are heavily involved because we understand, hey, man, Babylon, you can't depend on the, the school teaching your children, all right? They're not going to teach them like, like you can, okay? You know, so it's it's definitely a blessing that the Heavenly Father has uh, uh, brought us back into the fold, man, and, and gave us this truth, you know, because we could be out there just like the rest of our people, man, blinded, all right? You know, Second Ezra 15, verse 17 also says, uh, you'll desire to go into a city and shall not be able to, okay? Which also goes into pretty much your, the lockdowns and things. You know, they're going to have certain cities barricaded and stuff and being heavily guarded. So you ain't going to be able to go far, man. All right, there's gonna be a lot of lockdowns with that. Okay, hey man, uh, what is uh Second Ezra 15 and 14? Woe unto them, or uh, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. <laughs> hey man, it's gonna get rough out here. Okay, and that's why we're called, and that's why I do these, man, to bring this stuff to your attention. Because like I said, the news ain't gonna talk about everything. Now this was heavy when I saw this on the news, but for the most part, they don't talk about nothing. All right. This is another article. Hey, this regarding the MOTB, man. It says Neurotech startup uh, Paradromics, okay, to launch a $100,000 neural implant in humans 2025. Okay, they want to, hey, man, they want to put these things in you, man. I'm telling you, hey, mix, uh, merging man with machine. They're showing you in these movies and they're trying to get you prepared, get you groomed, okay? They got it to where, like, man, so, so people now can uh, pay with the palm of their hand, you know, uh, they showed you in videos and stuff of how people were going to stores and like like Eve, man, they had a, where this Eve, man, was going in there trying to buy something and couldn't purchase with money, uh, check, card, any of that. And this guy comes and they scan his head and and, and it, it paid, you know? So something, something to do with that head, man. All right. Hey, 425, please. All right. Uh, let's see. Kenny, keep your mask on. Sorry we don't take cash. Okay, um, one second, let me. Sorry, we don't take heart either. <laughs> I'm sorry? What am I supposed to use? Can you, can you step to the side so you can figure this out? Can I speak to your manager? No! Excuse me, do, do you guys take checks? We don't need it. I have the money. We don't need it. Okay, what the hell is that? Excuse, when was that implemented? I don't have that. Sorry, but we're cashless now. I had to implement the new system just to stay in business. It's it's okay, mom. You don't need it. Let's just let's just go. I hope you understand. Sorry, this again. It says Neurotech startup. Paradromics to launch a hundred thousand dollar neural implant in humans 2025. Hey man, I'm telling you. Uh this makes me think of a couple precepts. Uh all right, y'all already know Revelations the 13th chapter, but before we get there, I want to go to the book of uh Habakkuk, all right, chapter two. All right, and we'll just do it like this, all right, and we'll go to verse three. And it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it.
because it will surely come, it will not tarry. All right. And what is that? It will be the MOTB, man. All right. The MOTB, man. That thing, hey, they getting things in motion, you know, because time is running out for them, man. But it tell you in Revelations also that the, the devil knoweth that he have what but a short time? So that he'll gonna come down with that great wrath. All right, but this is Revelations 13, starting at verse 16, and it says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, like I showed you in a video clip. All right, all right, and that no man might buy or sell, say he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, hey amen. Heavy, man. All right, so we're going to move on to the next topic. We're going to get into store closings. All right, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into this first one. There's actually a couple of them to get to. But it says Walgreens will close a significant number of U.S. stores shutting down unprofitable locations. So a lot of their locations, people are not buying buying like they used to. You know, but the struggle is real, what they expect. You know, and like you said, people are not working. People do not want to work. So when you don't work, you don't what? Eat. The Bible says if you don't, a man don't work, a man don't eat. You're not going to get no money. All right. So how are you going to do some buying if you ain't got no money? All right. So people are not buying like they used to. So a lot of these stores are like, man, we're going to have to shut down. All right. All right. So you have that. Okay. And let's see. There's another one here. Okay. And it says nationwide discount uh, retailers with 14, uh, uh, 1,400 stores sparks fears of mass closures. So, all right. And this is talking about big lots. All right. As it molds bankruptcy. So a lot of your uh, big lots, we had a big lots over here and out of nowhere, it just, it's just gone. I kept saying, I was like, man, something missing. And I looked over, man, it, hey, it just shut down out of nowhere, you know? So, hey, man, some of them, a lot of them are falling for bankruptcy. They're not making any money. Uh, another thing is theft, okay? Which, uh, that leads me to uh, this next article. Because hey, that's a big problem too. That's uh, that's what also makes them rise up the prices. When people go in there and shoplift and do, you know, I watch a lot of those uh, cop uh, videos when uh, people get arrested and for thefts and stuff. And they say, hey, you know, when you do this, all you're doing is going they're gonna uh, uh, raise the price up on things. That's why you see outrageous prices on foods and stuff and, and items and, and stuff like that. All right. But this says Kentucky Councilman, all right, this is local, for, all right, here. It says, says residents must stop stealing if they wish to keep Kroger open, okay? And it says a Kentucky council, Councilwoman said residents must stop stealing if they wish to keep a Kroger location open, all right? And this is over in uh, Louisville, man, you know? They had one over in the West End, all right? And when during the pandemic, when they had that lockdown, people were busting out. They were going crazy because they needed their medication. They, they broke into the Kroger. People broke in and went crazy. All right. And I think that was just a test thing. They were seeing how Jake was going to act. And Jake went barbaric. Okay. All right. So it's, hey, man. <laughs> it's getting crazy. All right. So I got a couple of precepts I'm going to get to. All right. Let's see. All right, this is Second Ezra chapter six. I'm gonna start at verse 22, and it says, "And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown; the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty." See that? This is in the scriptures. Okay, your pastor's not bringing these things out, but the men of the Lord are. They're showing you how things that are happening, and then it's not co uh, coincidental. All right, they're lining up with biblical prophecy. Okay, verse 23, and it says, "And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid." So when people begin to see all these things, they're going to be afraid, man, because this it's going to be eerie. It's going to be gruesome, man. It's not going to be, it's not going to end well. All right. You know, that also going to means no work. Okay. Which uh, Isaiah 19 uh, verse 15 tells you what? No work. There'll be no work in what? Egypt, which this place is spiritual Egypt. So you can apply that scripture to this place. All right. Talking about uh, America. All right. This place is Babylon the Great, man. All right, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, starting at verse three, and it says, in the days when the keepers of the, of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few. See that? 
and those that look out of the windows be darkened. All right. Verse four, it says, and the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, see, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and the daughters of music shall be brought low. Hey, Amen. this place is being brought low. All right. Babylon is fallen, man. Okay. Hey, we're happy. We're in the spirit of rejoicing. Okay. That's why we bring out these prophecies and show you things that are happening. All right. Like this, because one of the things also that's going to hit this place is the economic crash. All right. It says, Russia says BRICS must prepare for the collapse of the dollar. Okay. So, you know, hey, man, uh, these nations, man, they're getting very, very, very tired of Babylon, you know, especially Putin. He's like one of the biggest uh, <laughs> uh, adversaries of Babylon because he's got the most uh, weapons and things like that. All right. Which I got an article regarding some things that's happening now. Okay. And then uh, Babylon has been funding Ukraine, you know, with the war between Ukraine and Russia. And then now they, uh, I think certain weaponry that was used over in, uh, against Russia, you know, they were actually, uh, they're U.S. made or something. Because he said if any of them come from like U.S. or something, hey man, that's, that's going to provoke them. Man. All right. And he's been aligning himself with many other uh, uh, enemies of uh, Babylon going with them. And they're joining BRICS now. Uh, and making deals and they're preparing themselves joining themselves man together because they're going to turn they're going to turn on this place man so again it says russia says BRICS must be prepared for the collapse of the dollar okay plus many other nations have joined too onto BRICS. you know they ain't really talking about a lot of it right now they trying to keep all this on a low profile but he saw man he's done for man all right it ain't looking good for him all right so i got another uh I got another article here real quick, all right? All right, this is another one. This is from Watcher Guru, which I like to go on that site a lot. They usually, they're heavy. I think they anticipating on that uh, economic crash, man. But it says, uh, BRICS, it says, new nation to jail people who use the U.S. dollar. Hey, that's crazy, man. I almost was going to do a lesson just singly on this. I still might. I don't know, but hey, this is crazy, man. It says, BRICS, new nation to jail people who use the U.S. dollar, all right? So down here it says a new South African nation is following the BRICS de-dollarization mission. See that? Planning to jail any people in the country who use the U.S. dollar as the economic alliance has continued its efforts to abandon U.S. dollar. Zambia, all right, has become the latest country to ditch the greenback and plan to force its citizens to do the same by law. See that? Woo-wee. All right, okay. So, uh... Let's see. Got a couple of precepts. All right. I want to go to Obata Obadiah. I said Obadiah. Obadiah. <laughs> All right. Uh, verse 2. And it says, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen that are greatly despised. Okay. Who is that dis despised? Esau Edom, who is ruling. Okay. Also, me, Amalek, which is the chief house of Esau right now. All right. Those are your elite bankers. Okay. But they're all, all of them. They're all, they're being hate, they're hated. Hell, their own people hate them, okay? Shoot, the Russians are Edomites too, man. All right? But they, uh, hey, that's, uh, what does it say? A nation divided cannot stand, okay? The nation of Edom, they're divided, man. All right? And they cannot stand, all right? So I got another precept, all right? This is Jeremiah 51 and verse 7. It says, Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. All right, that made all the earth drunken, okay? The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. They all partake in that, okay? And now they're mad. They're waking up and realizing, hey, we've been bamboozled. We've been lied to. Man, this man has, has played, on, played us, okay? This is what Esau has done, man. Esau has played on the people, man. All right, and now it's coming back to bite him, okay? All right? You know, this man has spoiled... Uh, spoiled many nations all right which uh let's see i can actually pull that up i didn't have that in my in my records but or here on my notes i should say all right uh but this is habakkuk uh two, chapter 2 verse 8 it says because thou hast spoiled many nations all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee okay you see that because of men's blood, all right, and for the violence of the land, 
and of the city and of all that dwell therein. Hey, man, they're going to come back after this man, okay? You know, you go into Obadiah, and it tells you how people that are, are in line with him are going to eventually, they're going to turn on him. They have deceived him, okay? Look at the state that uh, Biden is in. This man, you know, he looked like, man, he don't know what's going on, okay? He don't know what's going on. You know, and losing his mind, but he's still hell bent on trying to run. You know, there's articles coming out saying that he's gonna step down. They're saying Kamala gonna take his place, and then they're saying that, uh, and now he's saying that he's gonna stay in there. I saw a video clip earlier that said, uh, basically, it was going into saying he's uh, he ain't stepping down unless the uh, the uh, Almighty uh, uh, says it, uh, tells him, tells him to step down. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, okay, who's that? Satan? Because your, your, your power ain't Yahweh, okay? You don't serve Yahweh, you against Yahweh, okay? Y'all making war with, with, with the Heavenly Father and His Son. And that's why y'all going to be destroyed. That's why you in the state you in, you know? Dude don't know what's going on, okay? But yeah, man, it's crazy. All right, uh, let's see. All right. Got some more articles. All right, this is another one here, and it says major bank raises alarm bell on cyber cyber warfare claims entire community is at risk. Hey, this is beautiful. I've noticed several Jakes been going by. Normally, it's a lot of Edomites, but it's good because hey, Jake is around here. You know, that's why you know I like this spot, man. I like you know I don't get harassed by the police or businesses telling me hey you need to move and stuff. You know, you're able to come out and just do the work, man. And people come. Are constantly coming through because hey it's one of the chief places of concourse all right you know like commanded you know hey they one thing they ain't gonna say is uh you know hey man he's uh that brother man he hiding he hiding behind bushes and stuff no i i'm set out you know but bet in between two businesses and there's uh people that can come from this way you know and then i got people that come from this way you know they come from all angles so i'm able to hey i gotta you know keep my surroundings and stuff like that but yeah you know hey i love it all right, plus I'm not stepping on any, uh, you know, body else's turf, you know, that's doing the work. There's people, the other people that come out and do the work, you know, you know, that's uh, locally. So, you know, and I've, you know, I've been hearing about certain people in certain areas. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll make sure I don't be in that spot and take somebody's location where they go and they, they're uh, laboring and doing the work. All right. But it says major bank raises alarm uh, bell on cyber warfare claims entire community is at risk. All right. And then this says Australia's big four banks are under constant attack, says National Australia Bank's executive for group investigations. OK, Chris Shahan, it says every bank is being attacked at all uh, or being attacked all the time. Australia big four banks, it has revealed, are being bombarded by cyber attacks every minute of every day, leaving customers increasingly vulnerable to scams. Man, they, they, got, they might wake up one day and their money ain't going to be in their accounts. OK. There was a incident with Cuba. People was going crazy, you know, not having their money. You know, that leads to riots and stuff. There is enough that some of them, hey, they're living off of a $40 a month income, man. That's not good, man. Hey, but this stuff right here, just because it's happening over in Australia, you can come here to Babylon, man. All right, so with that, I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah. All right, chapter 47. All right, and I'm going to read verse 1. It says, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Okay, see, this is virgin daughter of Babylon. It's saying ancient Babylon. It's virgin daughter. All right, this is talking about this place today. All right, sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. You know, this place has been unscathed, hasn't been touched. That's why the people were like, oh, we good. No, nothing's going to happen. Nobody's going to be able to do anything on this. You know, we're well protected and stuff. And so, you know, hey, keep thinking that, okay? All right? For when they say peace and safety, then what? Sudden destruction gonna come upon them. You know, brought that out earlier, all right? So, yeah, you keep thinking that, all right? But hey, these cyber attacks, man, like I said, people are gonna wake up that economic, and they can use this as an excuse, you know? And it could be them, that's the ones that's doing it. They're gonna take away everything because they want you to go crazy. Order out of chaos. They're gonna allow while they in their bunkers hiding. They're gonna let you all fight and kill each other, and then they rise up, okay? And they can get rid of us because they call most. 
most of the people they call them what useless eaters like i brought the article out people don't want to work and do they're considered useless eaters so they want to get rid of them okay they're going to get rid of them and they'll do it by way of taking everything whatever they have left all right strip them of everything which ultimately it's the heavenly father that's doing those things okay all right, so moving on, we got this article here. All right, we're going to get into some of that uh, third world talk. All right, uh, this topic. All right, and it says several U.S. military bases in Europe put on heightened state of alert, U.S. officials say. It says the alert level of force protection conditions, Charlie, has been put in place. Okay, because you know with all this stuff ramping up, all these meetings between these other nations that are uh, enemies to NATO or to the U.N., to uh, Babylon, you know, uh, you know, their so-called democracy, all right? So, you know, hey, things are they're becoming on high alert, all right? So, uh, let's see. We'll let Satan go by, all right? We're going to go to the book of uh, Joel, all right? Chapter 3, and I'm going to start at verse 9, and it says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty man. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. All right. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruny hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. Gather and gather yourselves together round about thither. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Okay. And that's what he's doing. Hey, the scriptures tell you that Yahweh is a man of war. So now he's beginning to draw these nations together, man, to, uh, for battle. They're going to be fighting. Okay. So you got to keep that in mind when these things are taking place, okay? You're going to hear wars and rumors of wars as well, but hey, man, you know, we, we, st we still got to bring these things out, all right? So with that, all right, this is another article here, and it says, Putin vows to make new nuclear missiles and to weigh uh, pla placing them near NATO nations. Oh, you see that? Hey, man, that's a threat, okay? All right. This man's making chess moves. It says the announcement appeared to be the Russian leader's latest attempt to raise the stakes in his conflict with the West, coming less than two weeks after his visit to North Korea, you see? And that's another uh, enemy there, which I got an article going into them. You know, it was talking about Kim Jong-un, you know, uh, North Korea fired, they fired two ballistic missiles. And it said, uh, and one may have fallen on, on um, the uh, land, all right? Making you think what, hey man, Second woe, the scriptures tell you what the second woe has passed, but the third woe cometh quickly. Okay, World War Three. So we're gonna get into that time. All right, but you're gonna hear wars and rumors of wars. All right. So with that, I got. Uh, we're gonna go to the book of Matthew. All right, the twenty-fourth uh, chapter. <laughs> Satan might making that noise. All right. All right, Matthew 24 and verse six, it says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, all right? All right, here we go. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places, all right? So you're gonna see all these things, you know, okay? And then the next verse it says what? All these are the beginning of sorrows, like I said earlier. All these are the beginning of sorrows, man. All right. So, hey, these things, these things gotta come, man. Hey, and the heavenly Father, man, he's got them hooks, man, in the jaws, man, of of these uh, Russians, man. Okay, getting them prepared. All right, man, for this third woe. Okay, this is Isaiah 13, starting at verse 17, and it says, "Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them." Okay, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. You ain't, they ain't gonna be bribed, man. Okay, they're gonna be like, hey, now we 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 beyond the uh, talking. All right, this is, hey, we, hey, put them fists up. We ready, you know. That's what. That's all, man. Ain't no talking. Straight up fighting. All right. Verse 18 says, their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. See that? And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. We can do that. N nuclear destruction. When that thing come, it ain't gonna look and say, hey, those are children over there, let me go this way. Nah, man, when it hits, it's gonna destroy everything in its path. Animals, whatever. Buildings, structures, you know, plants, trees, everything. It's gonna be destroyed in this path, man. Okay, all right? It says there are ash not spare children. Ooh, 
verse 19 says, And Babylon, there we go, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of child, these excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, which I got a lesson coming up. Man, that's a lot of Sodomite activity stuff happening. All right. They said uh, there was one, I, I shared it earlier, this uh, news anchor, which was Jake. All right. And it's sad, man. It's a shame. But uh, he, he, was, he came out and said he's gay, man, on, on TV, you know, live TV. That's what they say in this article. So we're going to dive into that, man, and just show how, hey, man, the Heavenly Father ain't dealing with that. But this place is spiritual Sodom in Egypt, okay? They, this place pushes that. That's why it's going to be destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? But on a whole nother level, okay? Because that fire being kindled, man, hey, the Heavenly Father's pissed off with this place, okay? So you have that. All right, and we got this article here, and I think this is my last article, all right? Uh, it says, Israel may soon draft ultra-Orthodox Jews, okay? What does this mean for the war in Netanyahu? Because, you know, they're at uh, war over there right now, man. Uh, Palestine and stuff, man, all that just back and forth. It's crazy, man, you know? So it's looking like some of them, hey, they're going to have to get out there and fight. Okay, so there might be a draft for them because, you know, they've been talking about the draft over here, which I've been going into that the last several weeks, you know, uh, that they, they, they were uh, proposing an automatic draft where the men from 18 to 26, because a lot of them, like I said, that article earlier said men ain't, they ain't working, they ain't doing, hey, Esau, gonna, he going to make you do something because, hey, man, the, the mindset of Esau, he says, man, I don't want a nation of thinkers, I want a nation of workers, okay? They want you working, and if you're not working, then, hey, you're a useless eater. So if they can't do that, then they're going to use you for war. They're going to throw throw a, a gun in your hand and get you out there and tell you to dodge missiles. <laughs> and that's what they're going to do. And that's why the scriptures tell you how a lot of these men are going to go over these wars, and they're going to die, man. Okay? All right? Them bride, bridegrooms, man, they're gonna, they ain't going to have no husbands. They're going to mourn because of it. All right? And then uh, on top of that, you got the women. All right, you got women now, you know, uh, they're going to start putting women in there. You know, like I said, when I was doing uploading some of my lessons, uh, this was some months back, but I kept seeing these uh, military ads on YouTube and, and guess who they had uh, on the picture with the uh, uniform on? Eve. Hey, man, they, they trying to get, they want Eve, man. They want to put Eve in that, in that, they want her in that G.I. Jane spirit, have her fighting in these wars, man. All right. So again, it says Israel may soon draft ultra Orthodox Jews. What does this mean for the war in Netanyahu? All right, and it says the Israeli Supreme Court issued a ruling on Tuesday ordering the government to draft ultra Orthodox Jews into the military. Since Israel's founding, ultra Orthodox Jews have been exempt from mandatory military service. The court also said that the government, all right, could no longer fund any religious schools, all right called uh yeshayas all right whose students are you know, we ain't gonna go into the rest of that but that yeah y'all get the key point in that okay and at the end of the day those people are amalekites all right and the heavenly father is not dealing with them okay and just to prove that all right that he's not dealing with them and matter of fact that he's at war with them hey this could be a chess uh move right here from the heavenly father to where now hey Y'all, y'all gonna get out there and fight and be in these wars. You thought you was comfortable in your in your wicked synagogues and stuff. Hey, this is Exodus chapter seventeen, verse sixteen. It says, "For he said, because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord uh, will have war with Amalek, what from generation to generation." So the heavenly Father is at odds with these people. He's at war with these people from generation to generation. These Amalekites. Those are the people that's over the land today. They're known as the Amalekites, which Amalek is the grandson of Esau, which makes them also Edomites, all right? So it ain't looking good for them, all right? And like I said, the Heavenly Father's a man of war, so, hey, better get ready, okay? Because one of the things about Esau is what, man? Esau has this war in his heart, all right? All right? So... All right, we're going to go ahead and go to this precept. Uh, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 18. All right, and I guess I'll go ahead and end it on this. All right, and Lord willing, this has been edifying, okay? All right, and it says, uh, The beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. It says, The beginning of evils 
which shall I do when these evils shall come? And y'all know I like to bring this precept out just because of that question at the end. You know, if you are a so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American, okay, an Israelite, okay, by way of your father, okay, what you need to do is you need to come back to the Heavenly Father, man, all right? You got to seek the Heavenly Father, man. Hey, his men, when we come out and do, we're doing the work, man. We labor, we do this, uh, we bring out these articles. See how Satan is, you know, but we just waking our people up, man, and just trying to warn our people, keep our people fed, updated on what's going on, okay? But, uh, hey, man, you got to come back to the Heavenly Father. We're trying to bid you back to the marriage, but we're making our call and election to sure, man, okay? You know, because, hey, the days are evil, man. You know, man, okay. Yeah, the days are evil, man, so you got to wake up and you got to come back to the Heavenly Father before it's too late, all right? Because time's... Time is running out, all right? It's running out on this place. And clearly, when you see me going into all these articles, man, it's a lot of woe, a lot of woes, man. All right, a lot of sorrows, okay? And great mornings, all right? So with that, Lord willing, you have found this lesson here edifying. I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, Double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel and Shalom to the brothers and sisters out there. To the next one, Shalom.